Afternoon all. I think we should pursue this concept of access paths in relation to exploitable weaknesses. I was looking through the 4NCL Division 1 games, which is a database you can download actually from 4NCL uh, Co UK, or is it com? Anyway, do a Google search for 4NCL Chess, and you'll find that they have a PGN uh, download area. This is a Division 1 game, actually a recent one, from the 6th of this month. It was Michael Adams, who's rated 2735, Super GM, against Elizabeth Patz, 2459. And actually, I was actually looking for black perspective games, but it was actually a stunning demonstration from the white side of perhaps, you know, an exploitable weakness and quite an unusual uh, access path. Uh, so let's, let's look at this uh, to show you what I mean. So it was a French defence in a line which is getting very popular, this bishop e7 waiting move. Uh, Michael Adams plays very simply against it. He just develops his knight, plays e5. Okay, and of course white has potential control over dark squares with this, you know, advantage in the centre, this wedge in the centre, which he reinforces with c3. Black prepares uh, to get rid of this bishop, so this is a familiar pattern for the French defence player to try and trade, and you know try and get some access paths to white light squares. But uh, Michael Adams, he's not, isn't really mind about that exchange. He just plays knight e1, and it looks as though you know the idea might be also f4, but actually there's something else, not just f4. There's queen g4 facilitated by the knight e1. It was unblocking the queen, and now we see g6 being prompted which further marks out f6 and okay you've got this there's this bind on f6 and d6 here uh, so are these weaknesses exploitable and what would be the access path in fact in this position f7 is almost an exploitable weakness now can you imagine an access path given that you can't actually play f4 f5 that's the point of black's play to grip f5 against f4 f5 but uh, what we're about to witness is still an attack on f7 so have a look at this knight f3 after h5 queen g3 and white's preparing to exchange off the dark square defender which would help in conquering uh, these two squares particularly this one but remember the exploitable weakness might be this one and then this one, the whole chain might fall apart after that if f7 can be grabbed. That's like the uh, the base of the pawn chain here. So queen c7, bishop g5, aiming to weaken uh, black's dark square control. Black castles, and now b4. And uh, black's queen side uh, counterplay is suppressed. Black is not keen to uh, have the c file opened against her king. So the c4, knight f4, it seems white has a free hand on the king side. But how to use it, given that f4, f5 is totally out of the question, how would you arrange pressure on f7? So have a look at this. I thought this was quite fascinating. First of all, some further play on the queen side, blocking up the queen side. Now uh, the exchange of dark square bishops. Okay, so you would you would see here that d6 and f6 are further weakened with that exchange. But the exploitable weakness might be this. But what would be the access path? This is still the big question. Can anyone um, envisage a direct access path to f7 here? It seems actually that here there's a quite clever path. Knight g5, yes, putting a knight on it immediately looks good, which is now forcing the first sign of having to defend f7. It was already defended by the knight as well, though. But this knight might want to play knight h7, for example. But here, the access path is revealed. This f-pawn is not needed. It can stay where it is. Rook e3. This rook left, which we've seen in one of my French defence games as black, another horrible loss earlier in the season, creates the access path of simply the f5 pi piling up on that f file against f7 here. So black is quite helpless. There's White well, seems to have a free hand to just build up pressure now. Okay, Queen D7 does prompt the protection of the A of the B pawn with A4. So Knight B7, that's not so harmful apart from this this route. You know these squares are ruled out. Rook F3 and pressure is starting to increase now on F7. H4, stuffing out any H4s from Black and fixing 
these two pawns. If this pawn can be knocked out, the chain is going to fall. It's going to be vulnerable. This is the base point of the chain. But uh, the access path to it would seem to be a bit tricky. Knight f8, not, now not worried about knight b3, just knight h3. Now the point of this is to be able to exert, believe it or not, more pressure on f7. After knight d8, sorry, king d8, pardon me, rook f6. Now note that knight h7, you can, white can just take and recharge that knight. So black's a little bit helpless now. King e8, black's waiting around. And white now is about to bring the other rook into that f file pressure scenario. So knight d8, and now rook e3. So the access path is extremely dramatic. Three heavy pieces piled up on f7. Now, after rook f3, quite an aesthetically uh, pleasing attack. So uh, rook g8, black's just waiting for a bit now to see what, how will white progress this. And white waits a bit, maybe to get uh, some extra time or something under time control. At move 40. So heading for move 40 without risking the position. G3 is not much of a compromise for the position at all. So maybe um, Michael wanted to get the extra hour on the clock by, by getting to move 40. So now, approaching move 40, there starts to be a committal decision. Move 40, King F1, and now at move 41, an extra hour for both players classic FIDE time control. White decides to use G4 to try and break through. So look at the pressure exerted on F7. There's four pieces here. But now this part of the chain is actually more exploitable perhaps than this one with this G4. Black takes and plays Rook H8, which would seem to be logical. There's another blockade here on H5. Or is there? No, it's about to be blown away. And this requires some calculation. Knight f4 would seem to be blundering the exchange. Although it prepares h5, what about knight d7, this poor trap rook? It's not a problem. After knight d7, Adams plays a crushing move here. Absolutely crushing. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, knight takes f7. And uh, one example, if black plays knight takes f6, then check. And just taking here, actually, not, not taking the queen, because the queen uh, was attacked by that knight. And this is like just easily just winning material. Uh, it's quite horrendous after that. There'll be knight takes g6, for example, if, if uh, queen e7. Um, so, Basically, this 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 is a pretty uh, dangerous uh, and crushing uh, breakthrough. If knight takes f7, actually, let's just quickly check knight takes f7, which might be Black's best try. Knight takes g6. And we see that huge pressure exerted on f7. Now the rook is also attacked, and if takes here, e takes two rooks are attacked. If one of them dared to move, then actually taking here is also pretty crushing. It's all just crashing through uh, in a literal sense. It seems the black's pieces are all, well, white can either maybe play simply just takes and winning or incisive move rookie free. So let's stop that. So it's actually uh, a crushing breakthrough, this knight takes f7. It's not a great advert for French defence. I know I'm probably putting you off, uh, all of you off, playing the French defence ever again if you did play the French defence. But uh, no, there, there are some great wins in the foreign sale of the French. It's just Adams is a, a, a class GM. He, he stops all the counterplay on the Queen's side. He pulled up, you know, remorselessly uh, pressure on f7. And then when f7 seems to be guarded, he broke through with g4. And this, this is a logical kind of uh, culmination of, of that breakthrough. Now, knight takes e5 is a little bit of desperation. It's just taken here. And then queen takes f7. And it's just, and now knight takes d5. And it's really all over, you know, hor horrendous position for black. And black gives up here. 
it's all falling to bits really um so there'll be for example check and queen takes c4 if needed at minimum of queen g7 that's that's an easy uh, uh way so if we have a look um basically i i um the game shows that with the space advantage there was an interesting access path of rookie free to f7 to get to f7 and you saw three heavy really heavy pieces piling the pressure on f7 in conjunction with the white knights the prelude to this that the exchange of the dark square bishops uh, the dark square grip uh, was first set up here and then the rooks came in to bear pressure on f7 so a treble like Alakine's gun type uh, pressure here with trebling of the two rooks and the queen I think the queen might technically have to be before the rooks actually for the Alakine's gun concept uh, but it's quite an impressive uh, trebling I think you will agree so uh, here uh, waiting till move 40 to calculate the breakthrough uh, blacks just helpless here uh, with this occupation on the dark squares and the enormous ethyl pressure now the breakthrough with knight f4 which needed some precise calculations so it seems knight takes f7 crushing blow here okay so um there's there's something i thought in 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 terms of access paths to glean on this that sometimes you know even uh with the pawn left on f2 you can arrange an f file attack if it's like a, a french defense closed position the black might not be able to do anything it seems in closed positions like the French uh, the access paths are, are very important and that they can be slowly taken advantage of uh, because of the nature of position being slow and closed if, if the opponent's counterplay is minimized minimal uh, then they can just be waiting around for long seemingly long you know maneuvers in this game we saw a trembling maneuver uh, culminating then in a breakthrough on the king side I hope you got something from that I'm just gleaning over for this this new concept really to find examples which might support the idea that um, as well as the identification of exploitable weaknesses identification of critical access paths to them might be just as important to really realize an exploitable weakness comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much